Hello everyone, this is Professor Jay Kim. Today I'm going to show you how to create this vintage style logo design using Illustrator. And we're going to do some final touches in Photoshop. I did this type of video file uh, before this several times, but um, this is the real final, final version. So please just follow my step-by-step -step instruction and we're going to make it. And please don't forget to subscribe my channel, hit the like button, and set the alarm for my latest video. Then let's get started. Okay, so first, please download yeah, this file from the link I provided in my description, colors.ai, with the other four retro color scheme palette. Okay, and then uh, the font I'm gonna use, I downloaded the other one file, uh, the typeface from the, the font.com from uh, this site, as you can see. And then under the fancy section, uh, under groovy category, and then I find yeah, something you liked. Okay. And then back to Illustrator. I'm going to type uh, my name, my username, Joey Kim, and then type size 100 point. Oh, and then also make sure your ruler unit is 100 point. I mean, they are the point unit, not inches. So, Command R, open the ruler, hold on the Control key, click on the top ruler, and make sure you're using points. No picas, inches, no pixels, just the points. Okay, I'm gonna hide my ruler. Okay, so once you type your name, go to Type menu, create outlines as a graphic. As you can see, there are some of the other overlapping areas. So I'm gonna open the Pathfinder and unite it as one shape. And then, next thing is, still there your text is selected. In your toolbox, keep pressing your Scale tool, you're gonna see the Share tool, Share. And double click the Share tool from your toolbox directly and enter the angle, negative 15 degree. Just like that, okay. And then, now open Appearance Panel. Appearance Panel is under Window and Appearance Panel here. Okay, then select your text. Make sure you're selected your text. And then, on the bottom of your the, um, Appearance Panel, see the second one, Add New Fill? Click on that. And then, use your the Eyedropper tool and sample this color. Okay, so the New Fill color is added. I'm going to add another one, this bottom one, eyedropper, this time sample this color. Okay, so we have two fair color, the light blue, loud, light kind of a bluish green on top, and then a little darker one on the bottom. Now choose the dark one on the bottom. Then, in your appearance panel, you see the FX button, add new effect button, click on it, Go to uh, Distort and Transform, and Transform. We're going to move it to the right very, very slightly, 0.1. And we're going to move down 0.1. And I'm going to have the other 30 copies of that. And OK. See? So it creates some kind of a thickness. Or the other beveled edges. And then next thing is, Make sure you're, select, you're selecting the, your text first. Then let's add a new stroke. Okay, this time I'm going to increase the stroke weight up to 7 or 8, maybe 7 point. And I'm going to move this stroke layer to the bottom. And then, so this is a, uh, the black text. Uh, Stroke color by default, we're gonna change it. So this time select this chocolate color. And then in your toolbox, double click your color palette and copy this fill color, co uh, the hex code, Command C. Okay. Then now select your text, appearance panel, select your stroke. And double click the your stroke color palette and paste that number, command V. 
It's a kind of a dark chocolate color. Okay, now, your still select, uh, uh, text is still selected. Your stroke is selected. And go to FX at new effect. Distort and transform. Transform. And this time I'm going to move a little bit more. 0.2 because they has a thickness. 0.2. And let me have 60 copies. See? So it's a kind of a fake 3D text. Okay. So now, let me open my layers. So everything's on this layer. So I'm going to lock this layer for now. And let me add a new layer. And let me move this new layer to the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one big circle. So, um, so let me select this. I mean, yeah. Choose the ellipse tool. Place the mouse cursor somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Hold down the Option key first. Keep pressing your mouse button. And the Shift key and drag it. Like that. And use your eyedropper tool. And sample this chocolate color. So this is what we have. Okay, so this is still selected. Then now, go to Effect Menu, Distort and Transform, and Zigzag. Uh, I think the size is good. I want to have more teeth. Six, maybe seven or eight. And say OK. Now go to Object Menu, Expand Appearance. See? Now change your switcher tool to a direct selection tool. This is the white arrow. You will see the little circle in between the valley and the uh, peak. Choose just one of them. Keep pressing and drag it so you can round the corner. You can soften. Okay, looks good. And now select this. I'm going to hide uh, this top layer just for now. Okay, then this time Choose the, your ellipse tool, set the fill color to white, and stroke color, nothing. Place your mouse cursor somewhere in the middle, and you will see, see that. Uh, it shows you the, where the center point is. And hold down the option, keep pressing mouse button, and the shift, and drag it. So uh, these two shapes share the, the same center, just like that. Okay, so it looks good. And let me make top layer visible again. Select this circle. We're going to copy another one. In your toolbox, this time choose your scale tool again. Double click. I'm going to make it small, 95% smaller. And not okay. Copy. Okay. Then choose the, your eyedropper tool and sample this color. So we have this. Okay, so it looks good. Let me unlock top layer. Let me choose my text, my name. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So um, just to find yeah, the proper size and the position you like. I think it looks It looks okay. It looks okay. My name. I may make it a little bit even bigger than that. Slightly bigger. A little bit. Okay. So it looks good to me. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, then now, on the bottom layer, I have the shape, background to shape. Top layer, I have the color palette and the text. On top layer, select your text. You see that in the little the blue dots on top layer, which is the selection. I'm going to move it to the bottom layer by dragging. So now everything's in one layer on the bottom. Okay. And we may not need to keep this anymore. Let me delete that. Then, on the bottom layer, select everything. And copy. <clears throat> copy.
copy command C and paste in front command F it is under edit menu paste in front so it looks the same but there's another copy so now you see the red dot keep pressing and move it up see so we have two exactly the same logo on the same position see now hide bottom layer just for now on top layer select your entire logo go to object menu expand appearance go back to object menu again expand it fill and the stroke and say ok now open pathfinder unite it you will see the why we're gonna we, we're making these things later in a second okay so I have a shape so let me check my layer top layer I have this shape and bottom layer I have my logo so it looks good so just to select your bottom layer I'm gonna hide my top layer for now then go to file place place the um, uh, the one file you downloaded texture metal JPEG place it and overlay on top of your logo just like that just cover up then this time go to properties panel if you do not see this properties panel is also under window menu and properties and then choose the image trace select black and white logo see we only see the scratches but this is still vector I mean this is still uh, white areas so what I'm gonna do is object menu expand it say OK and then let me zoom in a little bit and then deselect and choose the, your direct selection tool click on white spot not on black white spot anywhere see and then uh, there are a few spots the other may miss so I'll go to select menu same appearance and it will select all white and hit the delete key so only scratches and then on this texture left left lip yeah just like this okay so I think it looks good you can resize it or that you can reposition wherever you want maybe like that if you like this one better then now open the layers panel make the top layer visible select everything together then go to object menu clipping mask and make it yes see so my uh, retro and the uh, vintage style logo is completed just like that I like it <clears throat> now let me export this to Photoshop uh, so I can give some kind of a fake 3D uh, looking so what I'm gonna do is let me select the whole thing copy command C and back to Photoshop so I'm gonna open this the matter texture image in Photoshop the one I um, you downloaded I'm gonna crop this into a certain size uh, let me choose my crop tool <clears throat> please choose the um, not ratio choose the other with height and resolution the second option I'm gonna crop it into thousand pixel by thousand pixels oh, thousand pixels and 72 dpi and return crop it so that's the size let me zoom in a little bit and then remember I copy that logo from Illustrator and let me just paste it command V as pixels okay and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger about that size I think it looks good okay and check 
All right, we are almost there. Then select the layer, the top layer with your logo. Uh, let me move it to the left just a little bit. Double click, bevel and emboss. I'm gonna have an inner bevel style and chisel soft and the depth, that's okay. And the size, I think good. And the soften, see that you can have a rounded or very hard. I'm gonna keep that. And then the angle, I won't have my light source from the top left. Something like that. Okay. And also let me apply the drop shadow a little bit. Not too much, not too much. Okay, opacity is good. Distance you can further have the further distance or less closer and you can spread more or you can make it a little bit bigger. It's up to you. Okay. So that is it. So this is the uh, kind of a uh, 3D looking uh, vintage style logo design from the Illustrator, the vector based image we made, and then we export it into Photoshop with some layer style, just like this. So that's it. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial and you can use it uh, for your future project. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Shoo, shoo, shoo.